My Govan, and welcome to the Tolkien Lore Channel. I'm the Tolkien Geek, and in this video, I want to explore another theme from Tolkien that also has some kind of interesting crossover with modern culture. I did a previous video where I talked about the movie Megamind and how Morgoth kind of and Megamind both kind of exemplify the idea that evil becomes monotonous, futile, and self defeating. Here, I want to look at the movie Passengers with Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence which I thought was a really good movie, by the way, and examine how this kind of treats a topic indirectly that Tolkien addresses a little more directly in his works, that being the topic of providence or fate. And in this example, unlike the Megamind example, we have a modern culture representation that goes kind of the opposite direction of Tolkien. So let's take a look at it. So first of all, if you haven't seen the movie Passengers, um, I should warn you up front, there may be spoilers in here, but the main things I'm going to say are not really spoilerish. But the main point of the movie Passengers is that Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence are both passengers on this spacecraft that's going to colonize a distant planet. And everybody on this ship is in some kind of hypersleep or stasis or whatever you want to call it. And eventually a meteor storm hits the ship, damages it, and starts creating malfunctions. And as a result, Chris Pratt wakes up, and eventually Jennifer Lawrence wakes up. And their characters have this, you know, existence where nobody else is awake. And they start to realize the ship is falling apart, and they have to figure out a way to fix it so that the ship doesn't completely fall apart and kill everybody. Eventually one of the crew members wakes up. Lots of different things happen. Eventually they do finally resolve the problem and end up having a life together and then everybody else wakes up much later and they're like Somebody's been awake and there's like a forest in the ship uh, So it's really interesting how it all plays out and I don't want to get into too much detail and spoil it all but What's interesting about the movie? To me anyway from a from a literary or critical analysis point of view is that if you look at it through the lens of something like providence or fate, it looks like something is guiding everything in the movie. And you can see this in various different ways. There's different parts of the movie where if something doesn't happen, then they don't eventually solve the problem at the end. And you kind of have to look back after the end to kind of see it to some extent. But there's just a lot of human drama in the story that makes it interesting. But the the progression of events is interesting in and of itself when looked at taken together because you get a lot of different things. Like if the crew member didn't wake up when he did, they wouldn't have access to parts of the ship that they had to access to fix the ship. If Jennifer Lawrence didn't wake up and it was only Chris Pratt, they couldn't have managed it because they needed more people. If Chris Pratt didn't wake up in the first place, they all would have went up in flames because he's the engineer and you know, not the engineer of the ship, but I mean, he's, he's an engineer and knows some stuff. So, I mean, there's just, thing after thing after thing after thing that really points to this idea that if, if one of these things didn't happen or went wrong, they wouldn't have succeeded in fixing the ship and, and ultimately saving everybody from dying out in the middle of space when the ship completely imploded. Now, the reason this is interesting is because there are basically no references to anything in the movie about providence, fate, anything like that. You don't get the idea that this is a theistic worldview in the movie. You don't get the idea that there's anything guiding anything other than the series of events themselves. It just, at the end, all seems like completely dumb luck. And at the end of the day, when I watched the movie, even though I enjoyed the movie, it left kind of a weird taste in my mouth because I was like, this looks like something that I've seen before, but it doesn't turn out the way it's supposed to. And what it looks like, interestingly enough, is The Hobbit. And to a lesser degree, The Lord of the Rings, but The Hobbit is maybe slightly more on the nose about it. Uh, so let me talk about some examples and explain what I mean. So in The Hobbit, we have multiple instances of things that happen that seem bad at the time or don't really seem beneficial but at the end turn out to be exactly what was needed one of those examples being when the hobbit when bilbo and the dwarves are captured by goblins in the misty mountains the way they end up coming out is not where they intended to go they were trying to pass uh, through the mountains at a different point and come out somewhere else and it turns out after the fact 
that they realized, well, if they had gone their intended route, it would have actually not worked out. Similarly, when they go through Mirkwood, they get captured by the Woodland Elves there, and only after they escape do they realize that if they had just continued on the road as was the plan, the road was blocked, and they wouldn't have made it out that way. And there's numerous examples of this throughout The Hobbit. There's several different points where this kind of thing happens, and so it's interesting to see how you get that parallel with passengers where passengers there's all these things that must happen just so so that the ultimate end is reached similarly in the hobbit if they weren't captured by goblins if they weren't captured by elves if this didn't happen if this didn't happen if this didn't happen then they wouldn't have made it to the lonely mountain in time killed smaug and all this other stuff unlike passengers though Hob the hobbit ends with a very interesting statement rather implied, but a statement nonetheless, where Gandalf basically tells Bilbo at the end, you don't suppose that all of this happened by mere luck just for your sole benefit, do you? You're a very fine fellow, Mr. Baggins, but you're only a very small person in a big world, after all. And here Gandalf is pointing to Providence. He's basically saying the prophecies didn't come true just because you're lucky and just yay you. It's, you know, this was planned. There was something else behind this. A greater purpose was served than just yours. And you get similar remarks in The Lord of the Rings, although it's a little less on the nose. Like I mentioned, you've got, for example, where uh, Gandalf tells Frodo, you know, Bilbo was meant to find the ring, and therefore you also were meant to have it, and that may be an encouraging thought. And he also says, I can put it no plainer than, you know, you were, it was, it was Bilbo was meant to find the ring and not by its maker. And because of all this, you get the very clear impression that what Gandalf is saying is there is another power at work directing events that is trying to make things turn out a certain way. And so you can see how all this works out. So whereas in the Passengers movie we get a you know a series of really lucky events to kind of opposite paraphrase a book title we get on the other hand in Tolkien's world we get a series of events that turn out well but they're not just luck and that ultimately is the reason why at the end of Passengers I felt like something was off you don't get that lucky things don't just happen so perfectly for no reason it just doesn't really seem to fit our experience you know I mean we we can get lucky one off and and things can be nice for us or whatever but you very rarely see things go in such a way that you know one thing after another happens just the way it needs to to make things turn out optimally that just really doesn't ever happen and so at the end of the day Tolkien's world is a little more consistent it seems to me in the sense that he is ascribing this what appears to be incredible luck to not mere chance, but instead to something that is someone or something that is planning events out so that things can turn out the way they ought to turn out. And to me, that is a lot more satisfying than the way Passengers goes, because in Passengers, it's literally just, at the end of the movie, you, you start racking up in your brain all the things that had to go just right, and you're like, that is so improbable. And having read Tolkien already, I was already prepared to think of things in this providential way, and it just, to me, the providential aspect of looking at it seems a lot more satisfying, like I said, than just ascribing it all to pure luck. At any rate, that's kind of my take on passengers and this idea of extreme luck or providence and comparing it to Tolkien. So, hope you enjoyed that video. Hope it maybe makes you think about these things a little bit as well. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up and share it around. It helps out a lot. If you want some Tolkien trivia questions, you can uh, follow me on Twitter at JRRTLore. And, of course, you can subscribe to the channel here. Don't forget to click that bell icon. You can support the channel here, and you can find two of my previous videos here. Until the next time, I'm the Tolkien Geek, signing out for the Tolkien Lore channel. Number